In this video, we're going to be looking at some notes on solving rational equations, and we're only going to do that graphically. We're not going to do that algebraically today. Um, so it starts out up here to solve any equation. Remember that we can graph the right side of the equation as one function, which we usually put as y1 in our calculator, and the left side of the equation as a second function, y2 in our calculator, and we'll just look for where they cross. The thing we have to be careful of with rational functions is remember that we cannot have division by zero. Division by zero is illegal. So we cannot have any solutions to an equation that would create division by zero in the original problem. And when we look at an original problem, we can write the excluded values where x is not equal to any zeros of the denominator. So let's start out and look at an example here. We're supposed to solve this equation. The first thing that I'm going to note is any excluded values, so places where the bottom would equal 0. In my first fraction, I have 3 times x minus 12. I could take a 3 as a GCF out of that bottom factor, and I would have x minus 4. Uh, my second fraction had an x minus 4 in the denominator, and my third fraction had a 3 in the denominator. So if I set all of those fractions, denominators, equal to 0, the only place that's going to give me a problem is where x minus 4 is equal to 0, which would give me x equals 4. If x equals 4 equals 0, if x equals 4, we have division by 0, and this would not exist. Our problem would have either a hole or an asymptote or something going on, so my excluded values are that x cannot equal 4. When I'm solving graphically, I don't have to worry as much about excluded values because they really shouldn't come up in my calculator, but it's a good thing to remember, and if you're checking answers algebraically, you've got to watch out for that as well. So if we're going to solve this graphically, let's go ahead and pull up a graph. In the y1 of my calculator in the graph menu, I'm going to put in the right side of the equation. It doesn't really matter which you put in the right and the left. We usually use the right because that's how we did it when we were doing inequalities. Um, 2 divided by 3, or 2 thirds, however you want to type that in with the fraction button or the division. Then we're going to go to y2, and we're going to enter the left side of the equation. Now, when we're entering the left side of the equation, I have to be a little careful because I have some things that are going to require parentheses when I put them into my calculator. If the top or the bottom has more than one term, we always want to be sure we put the top or the bottom in parentheses. I'm going to type it in just the way it was written, uh, putting my parentheses. I'm not going to type it in in factored form because that requires even more parentheses. So I'm going to type it in just like it is, putting parentheses around my denominators. And now I'm going to graph this in a standard view window. So I'm going to go to Shift, View Window, Standard, and I can graph it. And I'm looking for where these two things cross. We know that rational functions typically, typically uh, make things that look like this, right? uh, where there's an asymptote. And then we also have the 2 thirds. The 2 thirds was just a horizontal line. So what we're looking for is where these two graphs crossed. On my calculator, if I hit F5 for G-solve, I can just hit F5 for the intersection. And it shows me that there's one intersection point. The coordinates of this point were 6, 0 0.6 repeating, or 2 thirds. Now, when I look at my original problem, I realize the original problem only had x's in it, so I don't really care about the y value from the point of intersection in this problem. My only solution is that x equals 6, okay? Um, we also want to be sure we're paying attention. Might there be any more places where these meet that's not on the page? And I know based on the end behavior of what's happening over here on the right-hand side, I have two functions that are flattening out on the right, so I know that they're not going to cross again. That would be the only place they would cross. The other thing I could do to check if they cross some more inside the window is I could hit the little over button on my calculator, and if there were another intersection, it would go to it. Okay, so now we have a few more examples down here that we can try, and we'll see what they look like graphically to get our solutions. So for number one, if I'm looking at this one and I want to state my excluded values, I have 2x can't be equal to 0 and 3x can't be equal to 0. There's no denominator over here on the right side of the equation, so my only excluded value is x cannot be equal to 0. Now I'm ready to graph. So let me go back to my calculator. My y1 is going to be the right side of my equation, which was just 2. Let me delete that, put in 2. My y2 is the left side of my equation. I'm going to delete that, and I need to be careful. 
I have 3 divided by, I'm going to put my 2x in parentheses, and then I was subtracting from that 5 oops, divided by, and then I'm going to put my 3x in parentheses. I'm going to graph these two. Now, it's, it's very hard for me to see what's going on. I've got just a little something happening in the middle of my graph right here. So maybe in this case, I don't want to use the standard window. I might want to zoom in some. I could do that. Also, at this point, if I hit G-Solve on my calculator, it's going to give me the solution, uh, whether I can see it real clearly or not. So I could do that as well. So again, I'm going to take my view window, and I'm going to try that INIT, the zoomed in window a little bit, the initial window. And I can see there's my typical rational shape right here. Right, and then I've got my flat line for y equals 2. So I really am only having one cross, so that looked like a good answer. Um, let me get that back up there again. G solve isect. So my answer for this was x is equal to negative 0 0.083 repeating. That's not the prettiest number. Um, it is a repeating number, so I can tell I can make it into a fraction. A little trick if I want to make this into a fraction on my calculator, if I just go back to the regular blank screen and I type x, it will give me the x that I had in my graph menu. This, by the way, will also work on your TI, and then you can just turn it into a fraction. On my calculator, I hit the FD button to turn it into a fraction. On your TI, you'd hit math, enter, enter. Um, so my real answer here is x equals negative 1 12th. Uh, I can circle it like that. If you look down at the bottom of the sheet, you can see the other way we often write solutions is to put them inside the curly brackets, and that's fine as well. Okay, let's go to number two. On number two, when I go to state my excluded values, I would set each denominator equal to zero. Well, the right denominator looks pretty good. If x minus four can't equal zero, then x can't be four. For my left denominator, it's a little bit more strange. Um, x would not be able to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 2, which is not the prettiest number, but if I were plugging in things by hand, I could always check them. All right, let's go to my calculator and graph these guys. Uh, so on the right side, I had 2 divided by x minus 4. Now, this isn't going to be a straight line like my other problems were. This one's going to be two of these rationals with the branches. Uh, on the left side of my equation, I had negative 2 divided by x squared minus 2. And I can draw this. I forgot them in my initial window. In this case, it, it looks like it's probably good enough. I'm thinking I might have two intersections. It kind of looks like it crosses here and it crosses here. The reason that I'm thinking that I'm not going to need to zoom out at all is because it looks like to the left these are leveling off here, and to the right my two are leveling off at two different heights, so I'm not going to have to worry about them crossing over there on the right. So let's go ahead and use my G-solve. I go to ISECT, and I cross at x equals negative 3, so I'm going to write that one down. And then if I hit the over arrow on my graph, it'll go to the next intersection, which was at 2. Again, these are often written inside curly brackets, and that's how I'll write them. Depending on the shapes of these graphs, sometimes we might get one solution like we did in number one. Sometimes we could get two solutions or even more. And then let's look and see what happens when we go to question number three for another option. All right, so I'm stating my excluded values. For this first denominator, x can't be equal to zero. For my second denominator, x can't be equal to one. And if I were to factor out my third denominator, x is the GCF, and x minus 1 would be my other factor of that denominator. So again, that's going to give me 0 and 1. 0 and 1 are my two excluded values for this problem. All right, I'm going to exit out. Let me delete what I have in my calculator and go from there. Uh, the first, the right side of the equation is 6 divided by and then I have x squared minus x. Again, making sure to use my parentheses. For my second fraction, I have 2 divided by x. I don't have to put the parentheses there because I only have one term in the top and bottom. And 6 divided by x minus 1. The x minus 1 is going to have to go in parentheses. And I'm going to go back to my standard view window. Shift view window, standard. And I graph that, and I'm not exactly sure what is going on with this thing because it's got all kinds of bends and curves. Um, it looks like over here, both sides are leveling off at zero. It looks like over here, both sides are sort of leveling out. Um, let me see what's going on in the middle. If I go to G solve and the intersection, it says not found. So it seems to me that 
these two are not crossing anywhere between negative 10 and 10. If they were, my calculator would come up with them. So does that seem realistic? Oops, let me go back to my graph. Um, yes, it does seem realistic for this one because when I look in my picture, my graphs are not crossing at all. So that would mean that this has no solution. The other way I can write that using my curly brackets is to just draw my curly brackets with nothing inside them. I would accept either answer written no solution or the empty curly brackets, and you should recognize if it were multiple choice that both of those two things mean the same. If you're concerned about it not having a solution on your calculator, another thing that you could do, you could go to zoom out, zoom out, and your graph looks a little crazy, but that's okay. If you use the intersection button, I still don't have an intersection. So if I've got no intersection between negative 20 and 20, uh, which is what my window is now, if I, let me show you that. If I look at my view window, my X's are between negative 20 and 20, then um, really this is not gonna have a solution because it looked like the end behavior was flattening out. Go ahead and pause the video while you try number four and number five and graph them on your calculator. Uh, you can check your solutions at the bottom of the page or you can unpause the video to look at what I did. Okay, for number four, I also had no solution. The biggest thing we struggle with doing this on our calculator, making sure we have a double parenthesis around the bottom over here and a parenthesis around the bottom over there. Um, you can see I have my graph up here in the calculator. It looks like those things aren't crossing. And if I go to G solve intersection, it says not found. I can tell that if I were to zoom out on those guys instead, I am not gonna cross on either the left or the right because they're flattening out in both of those directions. Again, for number five, when I type this in, I need to be sure I have parentheses around the x plus one in my second denominator. My excluded values were zero and negative one because that's where the denominators were equal to zero. I graphed the function. I can tell it clearly looks like it's crossing twice. And if I went to G-solve intersection, I got x is negative two, hit the over button, goes to also x is positive two, and those are my two answers. Come in with any questions, be sure you're playing with your view window and adjusting for if we have any intersections outside of our picture.